Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you for this uh, initiative. This is just fantastic. That's the first time I'm, I'm here in this meeting, but I really could appreciate. And I, I can only join my, my friend and colleague, Thomas, uh, telling that this meeting is quite unique. I don't want to take too much time. You are very courageous to be here. And uh, there is a movie to, to, uh, for, for you to explain what uh, uh, actually will, will be explained in more details. Well, I'm a physician. I was trained in infectious disease, infection control, hospital epidemiology, public health. And uh, in 1992, many of you or some of you were not born at that time, uh, I was uh, uh, sort of, I had the privilege to lead the first infection control program in my hospital in Geneva. So my role was to try to understand why there were healthcare associated infections, if there were infections, because at that time it was ve not very clear that you should tell about infections and count them and so on. And then immediately I understood that uh, we needed to do something with it. In Geneva, in one of the most modern uh, hospitals in the world, and we, we were losing patients. Uh, I don't want to say every day because I could not witness every day, but uh, certainly very frequently. And when you look at the healthcare practices, the way people were practicing. And when we were looking at the guidelines, it was very, very obvious that hand hygiene actually was extremely important. The problem was that in the guidelines, it was clearly written that you should wash your hands with soap and water, right? So here is your patient. Let's assume this photographer is, is the patient. I want to touch the patient. So then I need to clean my hands, so I'm going to the to the, the sink, I'm turning on the water, applying the soap, rinsing my hands, drying my hands. Of course, I do it very, very fast, and I'm coming back to touch my patients. These we timed it would take between one and 1.5 minutes, depending where the sink would be. So in the ICU, we look at the nurses. They would spend at least 22 opportunities for hand hygiene per hour of patient care. You multiply it by 30 times an hour, 22 uh, by one minute, one to five minutes. It makes this, the, the numbers very easy. Nurses had no time to clean their hands. Doctors had no time to clean their hands. It took too much time. So that was the explanation, but where was the solution? At that time, I don't want to say that there was an Eureka moment because it's too nice of a story, but actually what we understood is that we needed to be fast. And in my training as infectious disease in the laboratory, we used to have a little flask of alcohol-based hand rub very close to where, what we were doing with the multi-resistant bacteria, just in case we would contaminate our hands. And the idea was to just you know, rub your hands and then eventually wash your hands. So at that time, I said, well, why don't we use these at the bedside on a very systematic basis instead of alcohol, uh, actually using soap and water hand washing? And this is actually what we did. But this is not the whole story because I would give you each of the healthcare workers in the hospital one alcohol-based hand rub. Would it make a difference? No, it won't. This is not what will make you change your behavior. Think about the analogy of car and seat belts. Does the fact that your car is equipped with a seat belt make you fasten your seat belt? No. Be honest, it's not the case. My father, my father is 91 year old. He still doesn't use the seat belt, right? Because his first car had no seat belt and because then he sort of was never trained to do it, never had an accident, so probably never helped him to remind about the seat belt. I was not that good until my first four child learned how to drive. And when they were in the car, fastening the seat belt, then at that time I said, okay, I should do it too, right? Okay, I'm the teacher now. So I, I'm a little better now. What did it take us to fasten our seat belt in our cars? It took seat belt, what you call system change, a seat belt everywhere in the car. It took a awareness raising campaign. It took police control, and for some of us, it took police tickets, right? <laughs> so this is what you call a multimodal behavioral change strategy. And this is exactly what we did in Geneva to try to change the behavior of healthcare workers, and it worked. 
and we could monitor the change, we could monitor infections, infection dropped, we reduced not only infections but also mortality, and we could demonstrate the cost effectiveness of the strategy. As uh, said earlier, in 2004, WHO asked us whether we could imagine to generalize and to make this strategy universal, and of course, we couldn't actually say no, and we embarked into a process that started in 2005, actually, and uh, today, the campaign is actually active with or without signature of the Ministries of Health. That was one of the endorsements that we asked from the countries. The, 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 the campaign is actually in 186 of the 194 countries of the United Nations. So yes, this campaign, probably the estimates are that we are saving, we are contributing, you are contributing by, by actually cleaning your hands at the bedside to the saving of between five and eight million lives every year all around the world. Not only in Africa, not only in Asia, not only in the developed countries, but also in here in the United States. Remember, healthcare associated infection kills every day the equivalent of a 747 airliner crashing in the United States only. Nobody speaks about it. That's why I like to speak about the silent pandemic. We used not to speak about it at all. Fortunately, nowadays, now that patient safety is on the agenda of most countries, of most healthcare system, of most hospitals, hopefully, and according to what you are doing, it will spread and spread and spread, uh, it's clear that we speak about it, that we recognize the problem, that we act on it, and that, yes, of course, we could be successful with it. So the movie that you will see uh, is, uh, I have, I'm for nothing in this movie. Actually, uh, a professional TV crew came to me uh, four or five years ago and said, uh, uh, we would like to follow you all around the world. And they follow me, not exactly everywhere. They didn't come to Afghanistan, to Iran. Or oh, yes, yeah, to Iran they came, but not to Syria and so on. But, uh, but most of the, uh, of the places we have been with the team, uh, they, they came with us, and this is the, the results. And the movie has been made according to the, the principle of the economy of peace. So the, the filmmakers actually had no money when they started the movie. And they say, we will not do it for profit. We'll see if we could be sustained for that. And we'll see if we could get money. Today, uh, money has, some money has been provided by uh, donations or by the private organization for patient safety that I created at WHO. You will hear about it a little bit in the movie. And the movie was made in the spirit of the book that was published, actually, in 2004. It was written by a, a French writer, Thierry Couset, who made the book, uh, and then came to me and said, uh, well, you, you gave, you will understand in the movie, that the alcohol-based hand drop that we created in Geneva, we gave it to the World Health Organization, license-free, so that it could be produced all over the world at very, very low cost. And uh, so when Thierry said, you gave your energy, you gave the, your product, you gave so many things, I'm giving my book. So this book uh, actually was given by Thierry, and now it's translated according to the economy of peace by people who are uh, uh, authors, who are ready to translate it, and it's translated in 18 different languages according to the principle of the economy of peace. So at the end, uh, for those interested, you can get, get a book if you are interested. It's a different... Uh, way of seeing the story, but uh, the movie certainly uh, explains all the, 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 the odyssey that, that actually make, uh, made alcohol-based hand rub and the strategy for changing behavior uh, so universal all over the place. So without further ado, I'm happy to uh, uh, let the movie start, and at the end, if you like, I can answer any questions uh, uh, in the corner of the room or somewhere else. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's start the movie.